video we will discuss the problem smallest number on left. The problem says that we will be given an array of integers which is of length n and we have to find the nearest smaller element for every given element such that the smaller element is on the left side and if no smaller element exists on the left side for the particular element then we have to print minus 4 for it. So let's quickly see the sample example. Suppose that we have been given the array as 1, 6 and 2. So if we have been given this array, so the smaller element for left, uh, for 1 towards the left side is nothing, is no, there is no element, so that's why I'll write a minus 1. The smaller element for 6 towards the left side is nothing but 1, so I'll write a 1 here. Now for 2, if I see on the left, so for 2, 6 is a greater element. So 6 is not a smaller element for 2. I'll check again, so if I check for 1, so for 2, 1 is the smaller element. So I'll write 1 here. So the output is minus 1, 1 and 1 as you can see in the sample example. Let's quickly check out the second example as well. So let's say the example is 1, 5, 0, 3, 4 and 5. So if the example is 1, 5, 0, 3, 4 and 5. So 1, 5, 0 then we have been given 3, 4 and 5. If we have been given this particular array. So we can quickly see that for 1 for this element there is no element uh, that is uh, towards the left side. So there is so I'll, I can directly write a minus 1. For 5. The smaller element towards the left side is 1. For 0, the smaller element towards the left side is nothing. Because for 0, 5 is also greater than it. And 1 is also greater than it. So for 0, there is no small element towards the left side. So I'll write a minus 1 here. Then for 3, if I see, so the smaller element towards the left side is nothing but 0 only. So I can write 0 directly. Basically, I have to get the smallest. Like I have to get the closest small element in the left side. For 3, 0 is also smaller. 1 is also smaller. But 0 is closer. So that's why I am writing 0 here. After that, if I see for 4, so for 4, the smaller element towards the left side is nothing but 3 only. So I can write 3 here. Then if I see for 5, the smaller element towards the left side is 4. So I'll write a 4 here. So the answer will be minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 3 and 4. You can see in the output, minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 3 and 4. Okay. So that is what we have to do in this particular problem. Now, how can we do it? So for doing this particular problem, what we can do is, first of all, we can say that let's say that we are standing at a particular index i. Then... What we can say is, we need a j, we can say that we will have a j that will start from i plus 1 and it will iterate in the left side. Basically, j will start from i plus 1 and j will iterate until j is greater or equal to 0. And if I find a particular element such that array of j is lesser than array of i, then that will be the small element. Because suppose that if i is standing at 2 and then I have a j, so j starts from 6, uh, j starts from one step back, so j starts from here. Now, I can see that r of j is greater than r of i but i want a j towards the left side such that it is lesser than the current ith element so i'll say that okay let's move my j one step back and j moves here now if i observe so the current j element is what the current j element is one and the ith element is two so the current jth element is lesser so that's why for the ith element this particular jth element will be its next smaller elements toward uh, next smaller element towards the left side so that is why i'll write a one in okay so basically you can understand that this is nothing but a nested loop approach that I can try in a brute force manner. So what I will be doing here is, I can simply say that for i will start from 0, i is going to be lesser than n, then we can do an i++ plus plus, and then after that what we can say is, we can say that we can start our j from i minus 1 and j is going to be greater or equal to 0 and we will do a j minus minus. Now what we can do is we can always store the answer in a list or a, or a vector of a array, vector of integers, okay. What we will be doing is, if we get any particular array of j, such that that particular jth element is lesser than the ith element. In that case, we can simply push it. We can pu simply insert it, add it into our answer because for the current ith element, that particular element will be the smaller element and then we'll break. And if there is no particular element existing, then we can keep a flag and we can insert minus one in that place. If for the particular ith element, if we do not have a smaller element to, uh, for it, then we can directly insert a minus one because if you see for this zero, uh, if this is the ith element, suppose in this in the second example, if the the ith element is standing, if the i is standing at the this element zero, so in that case if I check for this j, so this jth element is not lesser than, it. so I move my j to one. Now one is also not lesser than it. Then I move my j to one. So basically the j array gets the j gets exhausted, j pointer gets exhausted, and there is no next small element towards the left side for the ith element that is zero. So in that case I'll write a minus one for that. But for this particular approach. It will take nothing but order of n square complexity. That is very, very high. Can we do it in order of n time? Yes, we can do it in order of n time. How? Let's see. So what I can do here is, let's say we have been given the sample example. So let's quickly see what was the first sample example. So the first sample example was 1, 6 and 2. 
okay so suppose we have been given the sample example as 1 6 and 2 so what we can do is we can optimize our code using the stack approach so what we'll have is we'll have an empty stack first of all we'll declare an empty stack and we'll start iterating from left to right so what we'll do is we'll be first of all at this particular element 1 now if we are at a particular ith element so what can we say we can say that for the particular this particular element for this particular ith element is the stack empty yes the stack is empty so in that case what we'll do is in our answer we'll simply push a minus 1 okay and then after this particular element has been processed processed so i'll put this ith element into the stack after that we'll move to the next element so now we move to 6 so for 6 we'll check is the stack empty no the stack is not empty so after that what i will do is i will check that is the current element in the stack is the current top element of the stack is it lesser than the ith element yes it is lesser because one the, is the top element and it is lesser than the ith element that is 6 so i can say that for 6 the next is smaller element the smaller element in the left side is nothing but one only so i'll write to a one here after that after six has been processed so i'll insert a six here okay after that i'll move to the next index so i'll move to two now when i move to two so i can see that what is the top element so the top element is nothing but six so now the stack top is six whereas my current element is two so i can say that i can basically say that now the current top element is not lesser than the ith element so i need to remove it so i'll simply remove it okay i'll i'll simply pop it out six was there i'll pop it out of the stack now i will check is the stack size is still greater than zero yes the stack size is greater than zero that means the stack is not empty so i'll check with the current top because the stack is, because the stack is not empty so i'm checking with the new top so the if i check for the top element so is the is now the top element uh, greater than my is the top element greater than this is the top element lesser than one yes the top element is what the top element is lesser than one because if i see top element so top element is one and the current element is two so one is lesser so i'll simply say that okay i'll write the top element here and then i'll push this two inside my stack after i've pushed it so i'll move to the next element so basically i'll move to the next index and i can see that the array gets exhausted and the answer is nothing but minus one one and one so you can see that the answer is minus one one and one let's quickly check out the second test case as well because it is more important one five zero three four and five so suppose we have been given the sample example as 150 then we have been given 3 4 and 5 so again we'll follow a similar process what we will do is we'll have a stack we'll declare a stack first of all and then we'll start iterating so we'll be at the very first element so if i'm at the very first element so what do i see i see that the stack is empty so whenever the stack is empty in that case we can simply insert a minus 1 okay indicating that there is no element towards the left side after that we'll move to 5 so when we move to 5 so before moving to 5 we'll insert the current element into the stack so one is inserted then i move to 5 so when i move to 5 so i'll check is the stack empty no so is the now if the stack is not empty so is the top element lesser than the ith element yes so i'll simply insert one here and after that after processing 5 i'll insert 5 into the stack that is the ith element after that i'll move to 0 now when i move to 0 so is the current top element is the current top element of the stack lesser than 0 no it is not so i'll simply pop it out then what i will do is i'll check is the stack empty no the stack does not become empty so now what is the new top element the top element is one is it lesser than zero no it is not lesser than zero so i'll say that okay let's pop it out as well now if i observe so what can i observe i can observe that now the stack becomes empty so i can say that now i was i was popping the elements out if the stack was not empty and the top element like if i can see that these were the top elements if the stack is not empty and the top element is greater so in that case i was popping it out again if i check is the stack empty no so again i was popping it out okay now if there is no if the stack becomes empty so in that case i can say that there is no smaller element towards the left side so that is why i will insert a minus one if the stack becomes empty otherwise if the top element if i reached a particular top element such that that particular top element was lesser than the ith element then i would have written it okay now i'll insert the zero zero element this particular element here after processing it after that we'll move forward so we move to three now when we are at three so is the current top element of the stack lesser than the ith element yes so i'll say that okay let's insert zero after that what we'll do is we'll insert three into the stack after that we'll move to the next index so when we move to the next index we move to four when we move to four so we can see that the current top element is lesser than uh, the element ith element so we'll simply insert three then what we will do is we'll insert the current element into the stack so we'll insert four after that we'll move to the next element so we move to five now five for for the current ith element the top element is lesser so i'll simply put it here 
Okay, that is what I am going to do. So you can see that the output is nothing but minus 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 3, and 4. So let's quickly check it out. Minus 1, 1, and minus 1. And you can see 0, 3, and 4. That is what we are getting as well. Okay. So if you will observe, so what did we do? We iterated one time, order of n time, we iterated and we kept on pushing the elements into the stack, right? And then if the top element, if the stack was empty, then we simply inserted what? Minus 1. Otherwise, if the stack was not empty, then we checked with the top element. If the top element was lesser, if the top element was lesser than the ith element, then we simply inserted it into our answer. Otherwise, what we kept on doing was we kept on checking the top elements. And if the top elements were empty, like if the top elements were, were greater than the ith element, then we keep on popping them out. So the pop operation, so order of n time for inserting, for, for pushing the elements into the stack. So we took order of n time for pushing the elements into the stack. And another order of n time, in the worst case, for popping out all the n elements. So the overall complexity is order of n only. Let's quickly write the code so that we are more clear with the approach. So what we'll be doing here is we'll declare an answer. So vector int answer. So first of all, we'll declare an answer. And then what we will do is we'll simply uh, have a stack as well. So we'll declare an empty stack. So stack int st. After this, what we'll do is we'll start iterating. So we'll say that, okay, for i starts from 0, i is lesser than the size, that is n, and i plus plus. After that, what we will do is we'll check that if the current stack size is equal to 0. So if the current stack is empty, if the currently the stack is empty, in that case, there is no smaller element towards the left side. So in that case, what we'll do is we'll simply push back, we'll simply insert minus 1, indicating that there is, for the current i element, there is no smaller element on the left side. Otherwise, we'll check that if, else if it is not empty, so if it is not empty and the current top element, if it is not empty and the current top element is lesser, it is lesser than the ith element. So if the current top element is lesser than the ith element, then for the ith element, the current top element is the next small element. So I'll simply push back the top element of the stack into my answer. After this part is done, so what we will do is we'll say that else if it happens that the current top element is greater than or equal to the ith element. So if it is greater than or equal to the ith element, in that case, what do I need to do? I need to pop it out. But do I just need to pop out, pop it out only once? No. I need to pop it several times. Okay? Because as you can see, if if uh, we consider the uh, case when we had 1 and 5 in the stack and we were currently at 0. So we checked with the top element. So was it uh, like, is the top element uh, greater? Yes, the top element is greater or equal to. 5 is greater or equal to the current ith element that is 0. So I'll pop it out. Then I check again with the top element. So stack is not empty and the top element is again greater than the element 0. So I'll top pop it out and then I will check if the current top element, suppose that if the current top elements become, uh, becomes lesser, then in that case, I'll insert it into the stack or if the stack becomes empty. So in that case, what I'll do is I'll simply insert minus one. So these are the cases. So for this, I will need a while loop because I am doing it regularly. Like, uh, because I need to check it for several elements, so for several top. So if the uh, stack size is greater than zero, so if the stack is not empty and the current top element of the stack, if it is greater equal to the ith element, so in that case, what we will do is we'll keep on popping it out because if the top elements are greater, then we need to repeat this particular process. We need to pop the elements one by one out. Okay. And in the worst case, total L L elements will be popped out only one time. Okay. After this, what we will do is we'll say that if the uh, stack size, if the stack size uh, becomes zero, so if the stack becomes empty after that, so we'll do what? We'll simply insert minus one into the stack. Okay. We'll simply insert minus one into the stack indicating that there is no next small element on the left. Otherwise, if it happens that we can come out of this while loop only in two conditions. If the stack becomes empty, then we'll come out. And if we come out because the stack becomes empty, in that case, we can simply say that we'll simply insert minus one because, because there is no next small element towards the left side. If otherwise, when we will come out of this stack, so otherwise we can come out of the stack when the top element becomes lesser than a of i. So if, the, if we come out of the stack because the top element becomes lesser than uh, the ith element, in that case, we'll say that the current top element is nothing but the next small element. So we'll simply push it into our answer. And then after the ith element has been processed, so this is the processing done for the ith element. After it has been processed, so we'll simply push the ith element into the stack. So we'll simply say that let's push, push the ith element into, into the stack. And after we have done this part, so in that case, what we'll do is we'll simply return the answer in the end. So what we'll do is we'll simply return the answer part here. Let's quickly try and compile this code to see if there is any error. So it works on the samples. Let's try and submit this code as well. So you can see that this uh, code was able to pass all the test cases in the very first go itself. Talking about the time complexity. So again, as I said, since we are iterating for all the elements, for all the indexes, order of n time will be taken. And you can see that we are pushing the elements one by one. 
and also you can say that we are popping the elements out okay so we are basically pushing we are taking order of n time for pushing the elements one by one into the stack and and iterating through the array okay and then in the worst case we are we are popping out n elements from the stack so that is nothing but order of n as well so we are popping out like we are not popping out we are if we have popped out a particular element then we are not pushing it again so order of n time in the worst case we will take for popping out all the elements so overall time complexity will be nothing but order of n only talking about the space complexity so the space complexity will be order of n because we are using extra stack space thank you for watching this video in case if you understood this explanation make sure to hit the like button comment down understood as well thank you